Hi folks, Vipin here. Uh, this is my third video about the stock markets and in today's video we will be talking about the institutional intermediaries in the primary market. Now before I tell you what institutional intermediaries are, let me first tell you what is the primary market in the first place. Now the primary market is the market for new issue of shares. Okay, When a company decides to go public and they decide to sell their shares to the public and that is in fact referred to as the primary market. Now the primary market is not doing so well in India. So when it comes to the examples which I'll be giving here, I'll be focusing on the golden era of IPOs in India. The primary market issues are also known as IPOs, initial public offer. So let's see what these institutional participants do. Now, this particular screenshot that you see here refers to the intermediaries in the DLF IPO that happened sometime around 2008. Now, DLF, if you remember, was the original sponsor of the IPL in India. It is believed that DLF spent around $40 million in sponsoring the IPL seasons. However, DLF right now was not doing so well. The share which they issued in 2008 was close to 600 rupees and now it's currently trading at little over 100 rupees. Now, when DLF started to issue shares in 2008, who were the participants who made these shares available to you and I? Okay, how does the company whose headquarters happens to be in Delhi, managed to sell all the shares it wants to, to the people in India. And as you can see, India is a huge country with a large number of people. So how do they go about making these shares available to these people? Now, firstly, there you have uh, the global coordinators or the uh, book running lead managers, as you call them. Now, in other words, these people are known as a merchant bank. Now, I'll tell you what a merchant bank does in detail in a few minutes. Next to them, you have a registrar to the issue. Carvey Brokerage happens to be the registrar to the issue. Uh, registrar as well, I will explain in some time. Just remember the participants here. You have two merchant banks and then you have Carvey Brokerage, which is a registrar. Below them, you have book running lead managers. Now, these people are also known as underwriters. Okay, there is also another underwriter here whom they have referred to as co book, uh, book running lead manager. Now, all the people whom you see in the second row, all of them happen to be here uh, are known as the underwriters. Now, what is the importance of these intermediaries? I will explain in the next slide. Now, you can see me there in the right hand screen, right hand part of the screen, wherein I've decided to buy shares of DLF, the arrow that's coming below my neck. You can see that I'm interested to buy around 1000 shares of DLF. Now, when I file for an application, this application in fact reaches Kotak Mahindra. If you remember in the previous slide, I've shown you that the global coordinators for this particular uh, IPO has been Kotak Mahindra and DSP Merrill Lynch. So since Kotak is Indian, I file an application with them. And the next thing that goes about happening is I've given an application saying that I want 1000 shares of DLF. Now, Kotak Mahindra has got different options here. Either they could allot the entire 1000 that I've requested, or they can say, we cannot allot the 1000, we'll in fact allot 750, or they could downright cancel my application altogether. Now, when IPOs happen in India, you might wonder who is the person who would spend 500 or 600 rupees for a share. Okay, my argument to that is people buy an Apple phone, which is so overrated and pay so much more than what it's actually worth. So you do have people buying and selling shares. So there is always a person who's ready to buy this. And then um, 
they can cancel my application or they can say we'll allot only 750. I've taken the second condition here that they're going to allot 750. Now, when I file for an application of 1000 shares, all the money is in fact deducted from my account. I would mention in the savings account number, I'll give them the authorization to deduct. But once the application reaches them, Kotak can say a lot of people have applied. We can't give you every share that you've requested. However, we can give you 750. And the next thing that happens is uh, Kotak decides to allot 750 shares. Okay, and this information is in fact sent through the registrar. The registrar, like I said, is Carvey Brokerage. Uh, these guys are going to record how many shares in fact has been allotted to me. Now, imagine the amount of work that these guys must do. I am not the only one here who's investing in shares. There will be lakhs of people who are doing the same exact thing as me. And the next thing that's going to happen is, once these shares are allotted, the information is given to Carvey, Carvey Brokerage. And Carvey is going to, in fact, confirm the allotment with me. And that's how the shares end up coming into my account. Of course, you must have something called as a DMAT account for all this is possible for all this to be possible. But if you are an investor, the first thing you would do is in fact open a DMAT account, a dematerialization account. Once upon a time, shares were in fact sold in physical form, as in you had share certificates. Now it's all done electronically. Okay, so you must have a DMAT account for this to be made possible. Now. This is how the merchant bank works and how the registrar works. To summarize, the merchant bank here takes care of the allotment and the accounting aspect. Okay, the merchant bank has a very critical role here because until the desired amount of the IPO has reached, they cannot allow DLF here to use the funds. DLF raised around $2 billion for their IPO. Even if the fund value is 1.99, they cannot allow DLF to use this fund. So that's a very, very important uh, job of the merchant bank. The uh, next thing, of course, is accounting. Millions of people, lakhs of people, in fact, go about low investing in an IPO. You can imagine how complicated the accounting will get. They'll be having money coming in from hundreds of bank branches all over the country and there'll be uh, rejections of applications, there'll be cancellations, there'll be refunds. All this is something that they need to take care of in an IPO. So that's a very, very critical job of a merchant bank. And Kotak here happens to be the merchant bank responsible for this. And Kotak here has tied up with, like I said, uh, DSP Merrill Lynch. So both of these guys are going to work together and make the IPO possible. Uh, it's not advisable that you do this single-handedly. SEBI rule says that if the IPO is more than uh, a thousand crores, you need to in fact take more participants to take care of the accounting aspect. That's one of the reasons why you have both Kotak and DSP participating in this. Carvey here is more or less like the uh, records keeper. When shares have been allotted, when shares ha share applications have been rejected, Carvey is the company that's going to keep an account on who got how many shares and who couldn't get any shares at all. So basically, Carvey here is a record keeper. Now, what is the job of the other guys? The companies like ICICI Securities, uh, UBS, oh, and good old Lehman Brothers is there. For those of you who don't know, the big reason why America went into recession in 2008 was because of that wonderful company that you see there, Lehman Brothers. I will tell you more about Lehman Brothers on another video. So do remind me, dear students. Um, Deutsche Bank, Citigroup, and of course, SBI Capital. SBI Capital is one of the largest merchant banks in the country. And all these companies here are going to do underwriting service. Now, what is meant by an underwriting service? Underwriting has got two aspects. Now, historically speaking, one of the underwriting aspects was you take care of the marketing. That is, when shares of a company have been made available to the public, how do you tell the public that this company is in fact selling shares? This was the time when media wasn't accessible for companies. So how do you tell people that, okay, uh, this company ABCD Limited is in fact selling shares, please go about buying this. 
once upon a time what my underwriters would do was they would visit people at dog and horse races dog and horse races the reason they would do that is because the wealthiest class of society would usually be present at these events because they love to gamble and what these underwriters would do was alongside the people and the company they would approach these wealthy people at dog races and horse races and tell them that look abcd limited is selling shares and please go about putting your money in them that's long long ago they would do this another function of underwriters is that they are more or less like an insurance for an ipo to be successful now dlf was selling lakhs together shares okay they wanted to raise about 2 billion dollars what if you can't raise the entire amount wouldn't that be a risk the amount of money you spend in in fact making this possible is quite a lot and if this doesn't become successful your investment is in fact an absolute waste so you have underwriters here who take care of that job any part of the unsubscribed capital which the public hasn't taken up the underwriter in fact takes up the part of the unsubscribed capital that's one of the reasons why you have so many people who participate in this they want to divide the risk amongst each other let's say around they've agreed to take up 10000 shares in case the ipo doesn't become successful now underwriting can happen in terms of percentage or it can happen in terms of a, a particular number of shares so uh 10000 shares will consider here and will consider just the five we will just consider five companies here each of them is going to divide that risk okay layman will take 2000 city will take 2000 uh, dosha is going to take 2000 and so on they do this because when you split your investment the risk in fact gets reduced if one company were to spend their cash for 10000 it will be significantly more than having to spend a uh, 2000 uh, cash for say 2000 shares so that's one of the reasons why you have so many underwriters okay it's also called as sub underwriting as well and underwriting is a very very common term that people use when they are studying insurance now this is in fact the concept of the different intermediaries who are there in the primary market okay you even have institutions such as custodians depositories but their participation is more seen in the secondary market okay i hope this video made clear about how these different intermediaries in the primary market work thank you for your time have a nice day and please subscribe to my videos bye